On this episode, we might be finished. Of course we're not finished. We encounter another nemesis. x And we activate the lizard brain. <laughs> Stay hydrated, you all. Hi, this is Christian, this is Lazarus Academy. This is episode 26 of our advanced schmuck tutorial. We are way into the development of this game and the game looks looks good, looks good. Um, we are writing a lot of jank in the recent times. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. The jank will eventually stop. There is... If you watched the last episode, there is a... Hopefully you watched the last episode. There is a, a, something that, that just, I, I just I could not let go. That's something that bothered me. And that is... I noticed this with this bullet. Now, right now the collision with the bullets is, is nice and precise. By the way, if you are a shmup player, don't worry. This is not the final collision box. <laughs> we want to make the collision box small. Don't worry. <laughs> It's, this is not the final. I just wanted to have like a nice big collision box so I can see the, you know, see very clearly when there's collisions. Don't worry. Uh, but yeah, uh, I wanted to make the ship collide with the bullet and it collides precisely now. This is good. This is what I wanted. But if you look at the math, the math is like kind of weird. So this is the ship versus bullets. And it's, this is a symmetrical bullet in all directions, right? And in the y direction, it's minus three, but in the x direction, it's minus two. Like the top left corner of the bullet, uh, as measured from the center, is minus three in y, but minus two in x. That doesn't seem right. It, the, it should be minus three, minus three. It's weird that it's minus two in the x direction. So I was like, what's the... Because I had experienced the same problem over here. I experienced the same problem over here with the enemies. That also didn't didn't quite work the way I thought it would work. So I was like, huh. And I was like, what could the problem be? What could the problem here be? Well, the problem is X crawl. X crawl! Now, from now on, every time there's a problem, first I'm gonna suspect X crawl. Uh, so the problem is that um, X scroll can be a comma value and uh, the way comma values work when you subtract a comma value from an integer value or like I say comma value but people say the comma is wrong instead of points in Germany we have commas so every time there's a point value we talk, we talk about it as a comma value it's actually a point value anyway anytime we have a non-integer value um, it, it behaves oddly if you subtract that uh, it, because it doesn't behave symmetrically when you add it, right? So let's say you have 1 and you add 0 0.1 and then you floor that again, uh, that will still be 1. But if you have 1 and subtract 0 0.1 and floor it, that will floor down to, um, um, to, to 0, right? So flooring is, goes always in one direction. And that's why it kind of breaks the symmetry of the addition and subtraction. <laughs> Long explanation. Um, the problem is that x scroll is a point value, right? And we don't want it to be a point value. That's kind of like messes up with, with, with the way we do math with things. Uh, and it creates like this one-off issue. Uh, the easy fix, the easy fix, ladies and gentlemen. Here, where we calculate the x scroll, we, could, we should floor it. And we can get away with that because x scroll is being recalculated from scratch every frame. So we can just work with the floor to X scroll. And that, see now, we're not colliding with a bullet, but that's correct. Because the bullet should be, as I said, symmetrical. It should behave, it should, the offset is the same in X and Y. So we should go minus three, minus three for the, minus three for the Y and minus three for X. And then we should get the correct collision. Now it looks good. Now we're, we're where we want it to be. See now this is all nice and good and peachy. And now we're gonna bring back the enemies and we're gonna we're gonna take a look at how the collision with them works. See now. You see? There's no collision now. So now we want on the enemies to also uh, go minus seven. 
Let's try that. Okay, that still collides here. Uh, I, I'm not sure why. Uh, minus seven, minus seven. Yes, yes, this is good. Yes, yes, this is good. <laughs> we fixed it, guys. We fixed it. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> what is this jank? Um, then here we also have to go minus seven, minus seven. Uh, we didn't do any precise tests with the bullets. Uh, I'm just gonna assume it works. We're gonna maybe do some more precise tests later on. The bullets are kind of moving so fast. Something I also want to write down because we already know, like the takeaways here, these are like the learnings and that we will then transfer into simplifications and systems that take care. Of this, of this jank, but we already know that um, we need some kind of unified collision box logistics, which is a fancy name of saying like, we want to have like some kind of system, a unified system that says, you know, collide this with this, and then you don't have to have like these eight values that you need to dump into a function. It just, it just, um, it just like knows already. The, the objects themselves know how big they are and so forth. In fact, we can already say we can already say that we kind of we need a place to store enemy data for uh, for enemies for sure. Um, there's a lot of information about the enemy. You know, there's animation, there is maybe collision box, and now today we're gonna maybe see a, a third thing that that is also that we need to kind of a like place to sort of like a library or like a database or that contains these things. Because right now we're spawning an enemy because there's just one enemy. But what if there's like five enemies or eight enemies? Like there is all these values that need to be filled in. You know, the brain, maybe the uh, the collision size, this collision box thing. Mm, the animation needs to be filled in. There's a whole bunch of information. And today we're going to uh, deal with a new bit of information about those enemies because we want to make the uh, enemies behave, react to the bullet hits in a visually pleasing way. So this is a bit of a juiciness episode today. This is going to be an episode where we talk about how things look and make them look nice. Uh, by the way, on the floor I had an idea with, um, with the X-Crawl. Uh, uh, let me try something. Let me, try, let, let me cook. Let me cook, all right? It's the new thing that the kicks are saying. So instead of the floor, because this is <laughs> this is a token optimization thing again, two, four, four, one, right? So instead of the floor, I'm gonna get rid of the floor. Because at the end, you see at the end here, we're multiplying it by, by minus 16. And I was thinking, we multiplying by 16 is like dividing, it's like dividing by 0. 6, uh, 0. Point, 0. 0. 0.0625. It's the same thing. Multiplying with 16 is the same as dividing by 0. 0.625. Let's run this just to uh, make sure. Uh, let's make it, let's make it, let's make it bigger. Bigger than before. Uh, I mean, let's make things faster. Um, this is all wrong now because we need to multiply it by minus 16. You see, we need to multiply it by some minus 16. See, this, this is the same thing now. And so we can use the backward slash division. So there's this is normal division, but the backslash division uh, returns a floored value. So this gets us our, our nice, okay, now we need, to, we need to test if the collision is, is broken. I, I'm not gonna trust anything anymore. X scroll, you're on the, you're on the list. Okay, good, this works. <laughs> okay. Good, so now, right now you see how the border of the enemies flashes. Uh, I want the enemies to react in a more natural, pleasing way. Okay, let's, let's try to figure this out. First of all, um, I want to maybe delete the, the rectangles. I think they serve their purpose. Um, yeah, I'm gonna comment this out. Maybe maybe we'll bring back them at some point uh, eventually, but for now, I'm just gonna comment them out. Uh, I am also gonna comment out the ship rectangle. That's fine. Um, right. 
Okay, and then when we draw, when we're spawning the enemies, it's fine for us to just spawn one enemy. We're just gonna deal with one enemy for now. We're gonna maybe bring back some other enemies later. For now, I am fine with just this one enemy. Uh, it's gonna be at 32, 32. Um, like this. Yeah, so it's gonna be here. Now I can shoot at the enemy. Cool, cool, cool. So I want the enemy now to react when it gets hit. And we had that in a basic shmup tutorial. Um, I think this is like a important part. Quite often I see people just not having on the radar at all, underestimating, just not dealing with it a lot. Just like doing like a very, not doing any kind of reaction when you, when you hit something or if, it, if they do one, it's kind of like not really interesting. Um, it, the, we really need to communicate when the player does some kind of hit because that's that's the thing that the player is trying to achieve. That's their goal. They're trying to hit the enemies to shoot them down. You want to give them like some good feedback. So it's supposed to look nice when you hit them. We already had the explosions. That already looks nice. But you also on your way to explosion, you also want to communicate this like yes, yes, keep doing. You know, <laughs> this is this is good. <laughs> We had in the basic Schmuck tutorial, we had like a flashing effect happening. So let us try to do this. Let's try to implement a flash effect. Um, let us go and update uh, and then um, this is the shots versus enemies. Yeah, we had a, like this E is called equals true. Let's do E dot flash uh, equals two. So we're gonna flash for two frames, right? Um, also something that we didn't do and we probably should is do say like um, uh, shots dot um, delete shots comma s. We want to delete the shot that sh hit the enemies. That, that kind of makes sense. We didn't do that before. Uh, so, so now we can see how the shots are ending at the enemy. That's good. Uh, but we also want now this flash to make the enemies flash. Now let's go to the draw function and let's go to the enemies. Okay, so here we're where we're drawing the enemies and we do something like if uh, e flash, then e flash minus equal one. Hmm. It's, it's, it's kind of difficult to do this efficiently. I don't, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe we should spawn enemies always with flash set because sometimes maybe flash is not set, right? So um, yeah, maybe you should set spawn the enemies with already flash set to something so we don't have to check for it anymore. Uh, flash equals zero. So we're gonna go if flash greater than zero, then flash minus equals one. And then we can do uh, palette manipulation. So we're gonna go pal. Um, so let's take just one color for now, eight. So let's the red is a prominent aspect of the enemy. So let's turn the red into a seven, into a white. Uh, and then at the end, we reset the palette. Okay, so the enemy is now flashing. This is not great. This is not great flashing. It, 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 something is blinking that's cool. I don't mind it, but it's just like not like it's just like a too much too little. So let us mm, there's there's now different ways of doing like let, let us just turn the entire sprite white, right? Let, let's let's go there. The problem is that turning the entire sprite white is you have to do like a four next loop. Let's do the four next loop just like to just remind ourselves like for uh, x uh, i x plus y zero to fifteen do. And then we're gonna go pal i7, right? That this is the, the code, and that's like you know 10 tokens. Ooh. 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 And also, like that's too extreme. Ooh. That's not nice to look at. That's that's just too extreme. Um, there is a different way of, of doing this, by the way. So let me just first show you the different way. Instead of just having two numbers and, and pal, you can also supply an array. And that allows you to, that array will just control all of the color changes in, across the entire palette. That's kind of like really nice. So for example, let us go here in this, in this area where we have our little definitions. For example, here where we, and, and then we're gonna go something like pal white 
um, flat or W flash. Let's call it W flash. And then we're gonna create a, a whole big um, array. I'm gonna just paste one in. I had one in a in a in a, in, a, in my clipboard. So. Uh, it's just like a whole bunch of sevens. Well, how many sevens do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Right? It's fifteen sevens. Um, the color number zero won't get affected this way because there is no zero entry. You can add a zero entry to this array by going like you know, uh, like this. And then, then you also would get change the color zero into color seven. Uh, but we don't want to mess around with color zero. We actually don't want black to turn into white. So it's okay to leave it uh, like this for now. Now, keep in mind, this is 18 tokens, right? Uh, and the for next loop that we did, that was um, 10 tokens. So that <laughs> we actually used more tokens for the, for the array. Um, but of course, of course, the reason why we're doing it is because is because we can split this, and now it's no longer eighteen tokens. Now it's just five tokens. So yeah, the split thing is is a game changer. Don't get me wrong. Um, right. And so how do we use the pal w flash? Well, uh, instead of this whole for next loop, we can oops, uh, we can just do like something like this. Like this, we just drop that entire array into the pal function, and then it, all of the colors changes will happen in one go, and that's kind of nice. That's still, however, that's still not what we want to see. It's kind of like still not easy on the eyes. So we might might want to design our own function, our own little array that is going to be that is going to be easier on the eyes. That will look nicer. And I did that, so I'm gonna I'm gonna copy in the rest of the owl. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna walk you through the the color changes. So I looked actually again. I free strained flashes from different games that I liked. I went actually to the research and I went through like shmups and looked exactly what and when in a shmup an enemy flashing, especially big enemies. And then what I saw is that the dark colors got brighter. So especially the outlines and you know, the shadow areas, the, they, they really lit up. They got a lot lighter and changed colors. But also I saw that you know the bright colors kind of stayed the same, a bit brighter maybe a little bit, not like you know completely blown out. Um, so it's more about raising the, the black colors rather than just turning everything you know completely white. Um, so in this case, in this code, this, this little area that I created here, you can see that dark colors got get all turned into red. Uh, the bright colors either stay, that's color number seven, stay seven. Uh, and then some of the bright colors turn into pink. And in this case, um, it turns into the, into the peach color. Mm, right, so everything gets either peachy, pink or red, but not just like pure white. And especially the black colors get lifted because they all get turned into that vibrant red. Let's try that. Putting this in here. See, this is much easier on the eyes. Uh, you can still see, like, it's not like the sprite disappears. You can still see the sprite, structure of the sprite. It's just like, it's just, it's just flashing just a little bit, just a little bit way more way more fun to look at that one is done are we finished of course we're not finished why would you think that we're finished are you crazy um so now i want to add a um like a splash effect i would call it a splash effect you know when the bullets hit the um, the the enemy i want you know little puff to, to appear like little little explosion and not like a full on the enemy explodes but like you know sparks to fly out and we also did that in the basic schmuck tutorial we had like little circles going out and that was like very fun and easy and easy to do um but now i think again we this is the advanced schmuck tutorial we want to add just a little bit more juice a little bit for fun to this so again 
I went to different shmups. I especially looked at this splash effect in uh, Dodon Pachi and it kind of like freeze framed, you know, goes went through footage frame by frame to see kind of like what the explosions look like. And it was surprisingly elaborate. Like I did not expect there to be as a long of an animation. And, uh, and that was that was kind of like eye opening. I definitely recommend you doing this yourself. This is this kind of like really impressive. Um, so I did create my own splash effect, and I wanted to import this right now. And we're gonna implement it together. Now, if you want to use my sprite, of course, as always, um, the uh, the sprite will be available down in the doobly doo. You can download it, this there. Uh, of course, there's gonna gonna be the code at the end of the episodes. So that's all you can just extract it from the from the Pico 8 file, but I will also supply you with the with the PNG that you can just drop drag and drop drag and drop into the to the code. Right. So this looks this looks like nothing because this is already we are already using the system here where it's just a half of the, the thing. So in order to see it's in its full glory. We're gonna have to actually implement it in our my sprite system. Uh, I've drawn this. Um, maybe I shouldn't use blue. I should use pink as I'd use it here. Um, I've drawn this outline here, so I can see where the splash is ending because the splash has a lot of black, uh, and I want to see where the end of the sprite is. In fact, let me let me fix this real quick. Let me just undo this real quick, and let's do it like this. Um, so I'm gonna actually before I drag and drop. I'm gonna fill this all with pink. Everything gets filled with pink. And now I'm gonna drag and drop this again. There we go. Ah, that worked. So now you can see where that, this this last piece, there's a final piece you will see in a second, has a lot of black. And in fact, this might be also a place where we can do some optimization later. But I think for that, we just have to wait until we get the editor. I know, guys, the editor is coming. Don't get me... It's coming sooner than you think, actually. <laughs> Maybe. Um, all right, let me fill in. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Let me fill the rest. I just want to see the pink indicates kind of like free space for now. Okay, so this is like one, two, three. One, two, three, four frames, I think. Yeah, it should be four frame animation of the splash, of the hit effect. All right, let us implement those into our thing. And you can already tell that. Yeah, I think I think the reason why I'm waiting for the editor is I, I want you to witness the pain of the, doing this manually. I think, uh, I think good tools need to be forged in the pain of having to work without the tools. <laughs> um, that, that's how you know, you know what kind of needs you have and that lets you create tools that are catered to your needs rather than tools that are just created without uh, having an understanding of what you actually this is, there's, there's, This is my wisdom bit for, for today. I'm gonna call it splash one. For now, we have the base data in here. So it's from 23 to 26. I'm gonna write this down, 23 to 26. Um, now we kind of have to make another system. <laughs> and I don't like that. So I'm gonna immediately, before even I make the system, earlier we're gonna write this down uh, for, for the takeaways. Uh, splash system. Uh, merge splash system question mark we might want to merge the splash system with some other system like the uh, special effect system might be uh, the particle system might be might be good might, maybe splashes are extra particles but the problem is like the way we have set up particles right now they don't actually we cannot show sprites using our particles so and this is like a sprite based solution so uh, um, we could also merge it maybe with a um, muzzle flash system. So uh, there's there's a couple of solutions there. Um, but for now, we're just gonna treat it as a separate system to kind of like see what it needs and how it behaves. 
and then we're going to see which other system we can merge it with, okay? Um, so, um, like the muzz, we're going to call this splash, uh, and then we're going to open and close parentheses. Um, and then when we hit the, the, the enemy, we're going to go add splash. Right, um, so what are we going to add? Well, we're going to add the splash to the position of the bullet. So we're going to go s dot um, x equal s dot x, y equals s dot y. Uh, what else do we need? Um, well, maybe we need the same animation. Maybe we need the same animation as we, for example, do with the bullets, right? So we need an S and an S S I. Uh, although, I don't know if there's gonna be different flashes. That's the thing, like if there's different splashes, I mean, then maybe we don't need these, but for now we're gonna keep this around. Now the animation is gonna be 23, 24, 25, 26. Yeah, and that's basically all we need. So now we need to have an update function and a draw function. Um, we could merge them together. We could uh, do everything just in draw. And we might actually do this because we're already doing stuff in draw here. So maybe um, let's just where we do. We have to maybe decide where we're gonna draw them. So it's gonna be something like uh, with a muzzle flash. Um, we're definitely gonna draw them below the shots, uh, but above the enemies. So somewhere here, right? A feeling somewhere here. Where are particles? Our particles are, yeah, the, see, it cannot be the particle unless we draw the particles over the enemies. Um, for now, an S in all, in all splash, uh, and then we're gonna go um, this. Um, it's not gonna be attached to our player, it's just gonna be S, X, and S, Y, like this. Uh, this. Okay, uh, we need to animate this though. So um, the way we do, where do we do muzzle flash? Do we do muzzle somewhere? Do we do, do we have a do muzz? Do muzz or do we somehow, oops, that's not what I wanted. Wait, 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 uh, what did I do here? I did just muzz. Uh, there was a do muzz function, oh gosh. Yeah, there is a do mass function, okay. So, here's the thing, again, that seems like quite similar, like the do mass seems quite similar to the, to what we're gonna do, do splash. It's kind of like the same thing, but with a different, different array, so we might merge them together. I'm not quite sure what to do this, because in, when I did my own experiments here, I, 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 I didn't merge them. I didn't think about merging them, but now I see the similarities. So it might be, might be good here. Might be a good place to merge. Um, uh, there we go. Delete splash S. So we're just like changing the, the names. All of the muzzles get changed into splashes and all of the uh, 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 M's get changed into S's. Now in the update function where we do do the do mass, we're gonna also do the do splash. There's a problem here, I think, and that is when we're spawning. See, when we're spawning the mass, we need to set the SI to zero. Um, so the first frame that gets shown is actually the first frame, not the second frame, because it immediately animates, right? Um, and I think, yeah, I think we need to do the do splash. I, need to do, I think we need to do it afterwards, funny enough, with the particles actually. So yeah, and then SI definitely gets to start at zero. Okay, so this is this is my approach here. Let's, let's see how that works. We see some splashes. We see some splashes. They are, there is, they, they look broken a little bit. We have to un unbreak them. Unbreak the splash. Uh, let, us, let us put the splash into, 32, 32, at a given position. And when we animate them, 
uh, where do we animate them? Did, did we animate them in two? No. Particles probably, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, let us animate them slowly. Is that the problem? Is that the problem? Yeah, that's the problem. Okay. Uh, animating it slowly is not good. It doesn't like it. Oh, right, 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 right. So we're going to go s.si. It's a bit of a hack here, but min s.si, comma, one. Um, we want to make sure that, that we have at least one in, in, in si. What the... We're flooring it. What's the problem? Oh, I th don't think we're flooring it when we when we actually draw it, right? Oh, I said min. It should be max. There we go. So now you can see the the, the splash animation going through. Uh, we can make it even smaller, uh, sh slower, maybe even. So you see how it's growing out, and then just moving. Yeah, it's just like not correct. Okay, so let us fix the offsets now. And you can see that this is just taking a long, long time, right? <laughs> I'm pumping you up for the, for the, for the editor. Uh, so one, two, so it's gonna be, offset's gonna be two in X position for the first frame. So for the first frame of the splash, we are offsetting it by two in X position. Well, actually it's probably always going to be the width, right? So it's always gonna be, uh, this is gonna be four, this is gonna be, Six and this is going to be seven. I think this is always going to be like this. Yeah. Okay. So now they're horizontally aligned. That's good. Uh, now I want to align them vertically. They they seem to be jumping up and down a little bit. Um, so in this case, let me actually when we when I draw the the muzz, no, not the muzz, the splash. Where's the splash? There we go. Uh, I also want to do the p-set. Oh, I want to see the, the origin. Okay, the origin up oh, up there. That's good. I want the origin to be at the at the center of the matter. Um, so um, the height of this explosion is seven. So we need to put it at six. Uh, this needs to be at eight. This needs to be at 11. And this also at 11, I think like this. Yeah, see? Yes, this is what I want. This is what I want. Maybe even the, the last one can be at 12. Let's see if that looks better. Okay, and now I don't know that um, because we don't see this flash as a reaction to the, the splash as a reaction to the, um, to the actual hit. So now we want to maybe spawn the splashes again where they're supposed to be splashed. So that's going to be shot.x, shot.x. This is going to be shot.y. And then uh, let's run this. And now it looks like it's burning. <laughs> I love it. Uh, let us delete the p-set here, or at least co uh, comment this out and bring back a normal animation speed. Okay, so something like this. Ah, oh, yes. A bit of a flashy effect I'm getting here. Why is it so flashy? Why is it so flashy indeed? Hi, this is Future Christian. I actually went back to my old prototype to so kind of like get down to the bottom of this mystery. And I want to show you two little tweaks that you can do to improve this effect. We're not gonna do this in this episode, but check this out. So here's a previous prototype I did. And you, you can see here, there's two little details that, that really help are making that splash look less flashy and, and more pleasant. Uh, one is to make the bullets, you can see the bullets collide. In this frame, the bullets collide with the enemy, but we still draw them one more frame. So kind of like to make the bullets linger for one more frame after they collided, not to delete them immediately. Um, that really helps. And then you can see also that the flash, the splash effect uh, appears after the bullet is, is disappears. So kind of like delaying the splash effect by one frame. Again, we're not going to do this in this episode. We're going to do this at the beginning of the next episode. But this helps a little bit if you want to improve this effect right now on your own. Anyway, back to past Christian. Yeah, it, it looks a little bit splash, a little bit flashy, maybe a little bit too much flashing. Uh, one thing we could do is we can sh lengthen this anim animation a little bit. 
uh, maybe uh, linger more in this initial initial flash so our eyes can get used to this. Maybe like something like this. I think, yeah, that might be nicer. Uh, but something also to th keep in mind is that, look, as we're moving forwards and backwards, the flashes appear in very different locations. You see that? Like even here, it's like, what? <laughs> Where is that, you know? And the reason for this is being that um, uh, the bullets are traveling very fast, and when they collide with the um, with the collision box, uh, they might be already traveled a couple of pixels into the box, and it depends on you know where the where the collision box is and you know where the positions are where the individual shots are going to be as they travel along the trajectory. They might get further into a collision box or or less further, and if you're really close, then actually. They're gonna spawn, collide it with the end. The end part of the shot will collide with the with the enemy, and uh, yeah, and but the splash will be at the top of the of the of the hit. It's it's weird. We might want to uh, invest some time into figuring out a way to um, more precisely calculate the collision point. Um, but otherwise, again, I think this is one of those things that will really matter um, or that might go away if the enemies are really big and the collision boxes are big anyway. It's, it's, or maybe we can tweak it with uh, making the collision box a bit smaller. Uh, there's, I think there might be different ways around this. I have to say, I do not like that there's a separate update function for, for the splash. So we may, might get rid of it. Um, I'm gonna to, to, to put it as a as a, as a note here. Um, maybe update splash in draw splash and mass mass is the same. The reason why I'm thinking about maybe not merging the uh, the splash with the muzzle flash is that the muzzle flash follows the player. The muzzle flash follows the player's ship. You cannot, the muzzle flash is not supposed to be left behind, right? But the splash effect uh, kind of like uh, stays where, where it was. The collision should stay where it was. So, but maybe we should attach the, uh, the splash effect to the enemy ship. I don't know, we have to ch check how that feels like when the enemy ship is moving. All right, no, but for, ex for now, this is, this is acceptable. But this is not what we're waiting for. What we're waiting for is we want to actually explode the enemies. And for that, the enemies have to have health points. That's right, yeah, we, we are getting there. We're finally there. We're, we're thinking about health points, guys, woo! Uh, so let's go HP five. And this is the thing. And this is the real reason why at the beginning I said we maybe need like a system to store enemy data because we need to have some place to look up how much health an enemy has, and we don't have that space at this point. Uh, right, so I, I said like I'm gonna spawn five, and then here when we do the collision with an enemy, we're gonna do all this stuff. Um, and then we're gonna go e.hp minus equal one, and I'm gonna go in if e.hp is smaller or equals uh, zero, then and then we're gonna go delete the enemy. Uh, enemies dot e, and we get to use it. Yes, finally, <laughs> we're gonna explode this. We're gonna explode this whole enemy. Uh, so e dot x, e dot y. <laughs> okay, let's try that. Ah, oh, that was so good. <laughs> that felt so good. Oh, I want more of that. <laughs> okay, let's bring in the random enemy spawns. Let's bring them back in, boys. Let's bring them back in. Where did we do this? Whoa, how do, are we even spawning the first enemy? How do are we doing doing that? Do, do we? Yeah, we have a single enemy spawn. Let's remove this bad boy. Uh, and then let's bring back the, those spawns uh, in update function. There we go, spawn N. Uh, then we we'll wanna make sure that the enemies are spawning at random locations. And then it's it's go time, baby. Wait, that's not what I want. Why do they, don't, they don't move. Oh, um, was, oh yeah, the brain is not the right one. We need to set the brain back to one. Okay, now, yes. Oh, baby. 
Oh, I didn't know you could, but you can. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Shmup is finished, baby. Ship it, baby. Oh, yes. Oh, this feels so good. <laughs> Somehow it all comes together. <laughs> and now we can also add more health to the enemies to see how it looks when there are more, you know, less. See, now, now it's like, oof. Uh, see, the sparks are kind of nice. It's okay. <laughs> it made a little bit maybe too deep into, into the enemy. Yeah, so maybe we, made, we might come up with something here. Maybe uh, we're gonna find the lower edge of the collision box and spawn the flash at the lower edge of the collision box automatically. Maybe something like this. We could also, uh, yeah, that's some, something we can also do is just always, um, just always like minus four, just always spawn it from plus four. Just always spawn it a little bit further down than, than we, we think we need. Yeah, that's, that seems better. Yeah, but this this is not good. I, I think this is a bit too too tanky for a for a popcorn enemy. Let's get it down to ten. <laughs> oh man, I'm having just too much fun. Uh, already, this game is coming together. It's like just have some enemies, just have explosions, some scrolling back background, and it already feels so much more, so much. Like a real shmup. This is this is already this ha. Uh, this makes my heart sing. And with this energy, let's move on to the doggy zone. Mm -mm -mm. Right, the doggy zone. So let's move on. Let's discuss what what the next steps is going to be. I think we had a lot of learnings, and I think the next step is going to be just go through the learnings and and chart a new path and kind of like come up with. Uh, you know, the big next steps, kind of like start designing the systems that will allow this kind of gameplay, but with a lot more enemies and which with a lot more flexibilities. I'm really happy about what we have. There is just one little thing missing, and I think that's gonna be nice for the doggy zone. Um, how about um, we have collisions with the enemies, that's cool, but we don't have collisions with the bullets. So it would be nice, and that's the challenge I'm gonna to give to you, is um, to make sure that the bullets bullets colliding with a player ship, that that's actually something that is being tracked. And also the enemies being colli uh, collided with a, with, a, with a player ship, that you know the player can get hit, and then they get in, in vulnerability iframes when they respawn, and so forth. Like to get this whole loop going, so it's, it actually turns into a proper shmup. We already did this in a basic shmup tutorial, and I think you can pull this off. Right, and this is also the point in the video where I say a big thank you to all of the people who are supporting this show on Coffee, who are making this show possible by donating on coffee.com slash lazydevs. You know, if you are not supporting the show, you could uh, uh, support the show on coffee.com and that would enable you to watch the next episode right away. Coffee.com slash lazydevs. Uh, right, and this time I also want to read out a comment. Now, this is going to be a, com a comment by again by Yogo Toriel, which also asked a question previously. Uh, this is actually from a whole different series from the Shape of Mind uh, stream uh, on day seven. They wrote, This is such a useful tool, you should post it somewhere. I'm referring to my sprite, to my um, not sprite, my vector editing tool. I create like a custom vector editing tool for Shape of Mind. And you got your uh, real asks me to publish this tool and I won't you know, for the simple reason that this tool is really janky and really not polished and if I release something to the public I would probably prefer that tool to be more polished and more robust and more universally applicable there's a sub certain assumptions that I made in that tool like the, the fact that it's always mirrored in the middle and so forth and I have like this, my own janky data format. Uh, I think if I make a universal tool for other people to use then I would definitely want to um, polish these things up and I just don't have the time to polish this up and I don't have to also because those tools exist so if you go on Lexalawful on the Lexal forum and look for vector tools people already made vector their own vector tools which are way more polished so yeah, if you want to use vectors in Articulate, I would recommend maybe going to Lex Lawful and use the tools that are available there. Yes, so uh, oh, man, this is this map is coming together, it's great. Now the next step is gonna be I'm not sure what the next step is gonna be. I think we're gonna take the learnings and we're gonna uh, try to master the jank that we set up here, try to create a system that deal with the jank. Or maybe 
we're gonna jump straight into the editor. Let's see about that. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.